You wrote another screenplay, American Babylon, mm -hmm. which you won an award for, or you won a grant. Mm -hmm. um, what, what's the screenplay about? Uh, American Babylon takes place in 2001, the summer of 2001, and it follows a 26-year-old exile from Chile. I don't know how I came up with that. <laughs> and uh, he, he mostly just wants to ignore the world around him and be happy and, and be chill and take care of his sick uncle who's an ex-revolutionary from Chile, who is kind of this, if, uh, he recycles, he builds crosses for the church he stays at. He's kind of this hermit. And uh, the main character also barters weed. So he, he lives in this underground economy, but it's some bartering. And his girlfriend, uh, Satya, a black girl from Oakland, who goes to UC Berkeley, studies history. She's an activist, she's organizing a march. So she's always pushing him to care and to get involved in the world around him. Back in 2001, you know, Bush had just stolen the elections and Oakland was up in arms and there was huge marches against um, globalization. So the world was very active. And so my film is like dealing with that world and it pushing our main character to care. But he avoids it until his uncle gets sick. He can't afford to take care of him. He's forced to switch from bartering to selling weed by kind of breaking his, his mode of operating in the world. Eventually in the march that the girlfriend uh, organizes, uh, riot police shut it down. It's a peaceful march, but she gets hit and arrested and taken away for a while. And all these things trigger the main character's memories of his parents being killed in a dictatorship in Chile. And so these, these dreams slash nightmares start reoccurring and pushing him. And he ends up kind of breaking and joining the group of his girlfriend and they all decide to take an action. And because of his history, they decide to, they pick a day for an action based on the day that started the dictatorship in Chile. And eventually um, it becomes a, an argument between them about doing a violent or a nonviolent action. The girlfriend is definitely about nonviolence, very much like an MLK character and embodying that ideology. And the main character, because of his experience and his past cannot do anything but do a violent act. And it's not about killing anybody, but it's about property destruction. They pick a company that had a history to this military coup. The US was heavily involved in the military coup in Chile. So the film is like connecting these dots and eventually they go into this. It becomes like a heist film and they go to do this action. They're in a plaza in San Francisco with two big screens on both sides in the financial district. They get, there's a snitch, they get surrounded by the police guns drawn and 9-11 happens in the screens and that's the film and it's it's based on real history um, a lot of people don't know it but the dictatorship in chile occurred on september 11th 1973 so all my life and all chilean's lives 9-11 has been a day that we that we mourn or you celebrate depends on what side you're on but a day for sure that marks our history and so when 9-11 happened here i was at oxy right here in l.a I, I still get chills, like, how is that possible? And they're very similar events. I mean, there's airplanes bombing the National Palace in Chile and airplanes hitting a building here on a Tuesday in the morning. It's just like really weird. So it comes from a place of me having two 9-11s in my life to kind of grapple and to address this cycle of violence. You know, like violence begets more violence is the theme of my film and how we, one, cannot have a historical amnesia and not acknowledge what's happened in the past. Because if we do, things will keep happening. And we need to learn how to deal with these things in a healthier way. That's kind of my crazy film. How long did it take you to write that? Well, the initial idea, I mean, the ending came to me a few days after 9-11. I mean, I was like, I have to connect these. Um, but, you know, that's a long time ago. And then, um, realistically, uh, two years ago, two and a half years ago, I sat down and wrote my first solid draft. Then I applied to the SF Films uh, Raining Grant, and I got a screenwriting grant for that. And since then, I've been, you know, I've done a few drafts. I went to this amazing lab called the Cine Quanon Lab that takes place in Mexico, small town in San, with mentors and 13 other filmmakers, and really like took my screenplay to a new level. Um, yeah, so it's been solid two and a half years really working. Um, hard at it. Yeah.
Is it hard for you to work on it? Is it does it bring up uh, it's a good question. memories or, or, or sort of an anger? I mean, that's the thing I had to realize at this lab is that uh, unconsciously I was definitely protecting this character. You know, he's not me, but he's definitely somebody who has a similar experience to me. I have both my parents, thankfully, so I don't have the pain that he does, but I still was protecting him emotionally. And in a screenplay, in a movie, you have to push your characters to, to feel, you know, to, to go rock bottom. And uh, so, yeah, I've had to open up, you know, my own personal fears, my own personal traumas to allow this character to go there. And yeah, the screenplay is way better because of that. You know, you have to allow yourself to, to feel and to, yeah, go to your dark side. Is that something you would recommend to other writers? Don't don't protect your main character as close as, as they may feel to them? Absolutely. I mean, one of the main lessons, so the girlfriend, I, this is a genius advice I got. In, you know, there's a, it's, this, my film is a story that has a huge backstory. It's not seen in the film, right? His parents get assassinated, which is like the biggest emotionally backstory you can have. Character loses his parents, right? So an equivalent to that, you have to balance that out with the present film. Otherwise, why are you telling the present and not the past, you know? And so something just as emotional needs to occur in your present, in the film. It needs to happen to this character. That pain needs to happen to this character. How do you achieve that, you know? How do you achieve a trauma of the past to affect the present? So I'm not doing this, but a recommendation or a logical deduction of that is like, I have to kill the girlfriend, right? Like somebody has to die. The uncle has to die. Somebody has to kill. But... Even if you're not going to make that choice as a writer because you don't feel it's right, you have to try it. And by doing so, by pushing to the edge, like killing somebody, one of your characters, you're going to learn what you need to do, what you miss, what, what you can gain from that kind of experiment. And so I highly recommend when you're dealing with highly emotional things to, yeah, push it to the limit, not as just a gimmick, but to learn what this does to your character and to your story. And it helped me a lot to kill her for like three days. <laughs> she comes back to life? No, she oh, never does. No, but I'm I saying I, I practice, I, I worked out the film in a way. What happens if she does get killed? You know, and like, what does that mean to the character? What does that trigger? And how that can I, I don't want to tell you, but how does that, how can you achieve a symbolic death in a way? You know, and that's what I had to do is figure out a way that she in a way dies. But not that simple.